Hello, everybody. I'm Nicholas Thompson. I'm the CEO of The Atlantic, and I will be your moderator today. We are going to have an incredible session. Star of the show is Nita Farahani. She is a futurist and legal ethicist at Duke. And she's so smart and so interesting. You're going to learn a ton. This is how it's going to work. We're going to watch a short video. She's going to come on stage and talk. And then we're going to do a little Q&A, questions from the audience. And that'll be a wrap. And you'll leave <laughs> enlightened and excited. So first off, a video. Uh, it's going to make you see the future and understand a wonderful future where we can use brain waves to fight crime, be more productive, and find love. Let's roll. You're in the zone. Even you can't believe how productive you've been. Your memo is finished, your inbox is under control, and you're feeling sharper than you have in a decade. Sensing your joy, your playlist shifts to your favorite song, sending chills up your spine as the music begins to play. You glance at the program running in the background on your computer screen and notice a now familiar sight that appears whenever you're overloaded with pleasure, your theta brainwave activity decreasing in the temporal regions of your brain. You mentally move the cursor to the left and scroll through your brain data over the past few hours. You can see your stress levels rising as the deadline to finish your memo approached causing a peak in your beta brainwave activity right before an alert popped up, telling you to take a brain break. But what's that unusual change in your brain activity when you're asleep? It started earlier in the month. You send a text message to your doctor with a mental swipe of your cursor. Could you take a quick look at my brain data? Anything to worry about? Your mind starts to wander to the new colleague on your team, whom you know you shouldn't be daydreaming about, given the policy against intra-office romance. But you can't help fantasizing just a little. But then you start to worry that your boss will notice your amorous feelings when she checks your brain activity and shift your attention back to the present. You breathe a sigh of relief when the email she sends you later that day congratulates you on your brain metrics from the past quarter, which have earned you another performance bonus. You head home, jamming to the music, with your work-issued brain-sensing earbuds still in. When you arrive at work the next day, a somber cloud has fallen over the office. Along with emails, text messages, and GPS location data, the government has subpoenaed employees' brainwave data from the past year. They have compelling evidence that one of your coworkers has committed massive wire fraud. Now, they're looking for his co-conspirators. You discover they are looking for synchronized brain activity between your coworker and the people he has been working with. While you know you're innocent of any crime, you've been secretly working with him on a new startup venture. Shaking, you remove your earbuds. What do you think? Is it a future you're ready for? Yeah. You may be surprised to learn that it's a future that has already arrived. Everything in that video that you just saw is based on technology that is already here today. Artificial intelligence has enabled advances in decoding brain activity in ways that we never before thought possible. In more than 5,000 companies across the world, employees are already having their brainwave activity monitored to test for their fatigue levels. Whether it's the Beijing-Shanghai line, where train conductors are required to wear hats that have sensors that pick up their brain activity, or mining companies throughout the world, employees are already having their brain activity monitored, and it, may wear, it very well may be something that we want to embrace as a society. OK, you might be shuddering. Right? That was certainly my first reaction when I discovered that we are tracking brainwave activity in the workplace and that we can do it at all. But I believe we need to have a much more nuanced conversation about it. Because I think done well, neurotechnology has extraordinary promise. 
done poorly. It can become the most impressive technology we've ever introduced in a wide scale across society. We might soon even use the technology to help people wake back up. This is a haptic scarf that MIT Media Lab has developed, which uses brainwave technology in a responsive way to give a person a little buzz, <laughs> literally, when their mind starts to wander to help them refocus and hone their attention. I'm giving you the positive use cases because what I don't want the reaction to be is let's ban this.